Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop, howdy. Today we have Kentucky Coffee Tree. Yes, this is the piece that had wind shake that I chickened out on, decided not to turn. I was afraid it was going to come apart. It did come apart, but in a different way, and yes, I kind of messed it up. Let's take a look at it. The piece comes to us from Trisha Humphrey. Thank you so much, Trisha. I decided to give it a go. And I'm going to link to the video where I chickened out on this one and went with another piece that Trisha sent. That was a little maple ball that actually turned out quite nice, but it just wasn't Kentucky Coffee Tree. And everybody wants to see the Kentucky Coffee Tree turn. Now this piece is about 10 and a half inches long, about 8 and a half inches wide. Here's where I messed up. It's about an inch and a half thick on that end. Three inches thick on this end oh my gosh what i did was you know this was one whole piece it had the big piece out here so i decided to cut this off well first of all everyone thought i could beat the two pieces apart so what i did is i i set this up on a couple of two by fours and i took a three pound handheld sledgehammer and i tried to beat the center out of this <laughs> <laughs> that did not work. So I set it on my bandsaw table and I resawed it. Well, uh, yes, I should have installed a resaw blade. I sure wish I would have installed a resaw blade. I didn't. I did it with a 3 8 inch blade that was already in there and it bent, as you can see. And we have now we have a curved bottom. This will be the bottom. Thicker on one end than it is the other. But I think I can still get something out of it. I think we're still going to see that beautiful bark. It looks like some pretty nice grain in there. It's just going to end up being a, a probably a shallow, I, I won't say bowl, probably a plate or, a, or maybe a platter. What I'm going to do is go over here to the drill press. I'm going to drill a large flat bottom hole with a Forstner bit. In the middle of that, I'm going to drill a hole for my woodworm screw. We'll get it mounted up on the lathe and do a little more talking about it and a lot of turning. I have the piece mounted up on a woodworm screw. I'm going to start on this corner and work the corners away. Not necessarily fully round. I, I just don't know yet. We'll see how it goes. I'm going to work from the top side down, trying to keep this bark on here. The lathe is going to be turning at 430 RPM, 5 8 inch bowl gouge, mask, and face shield on. I think that's as far as I'm going to go for now. I'm going to come down here and work on the bottom. It was three inches on the one end, but it isn't anymore. It's about an inch and a half all the way now. And my woodworm screw comes in three quarters of an inch. So that doesn't leave a lot of room down here for making a tenon or a recess, either one. I don't smell coffee. That was one of the questions. I wonder if it smells like coffee. Uh, being Kentucky coffee tree, I don't smell coffee. I, I don't know why they call it that. We'll just keep working at it for every little bit here. I wish I could say this was flat, but of course it's not. It's more narrow on this side than it is this side. Less thick over here than it is over here. So I can't, I can't just leave that. I'm going to come back over here to the corner again. And I think I am going to go ahead and get rid of those flat spots. They're about equal now on each end.
Okay, the flat spots on the ends are gone. Just trying to work this out in my little pea brain here, how this is going to work. I, I don't quite know yet. I still don't know if it's a tenon or a recess. I guess I'm going to have to flatten that off. It just isn't going to work like that. Just trying to get rid of that last little bit of thinness. I think it's, I think it's right there. I, th I think we're good now. This is actually kind of fun, kind of a little challenge. Now I could put a glue block on there. I could use hot glue and just glue a block on there and turn a tenon on that, and then take it off later to preserve my thickness. Or I can just go ahead and put in a recess about an eighth of an inch deep and leave it there, and we'll still have an inch, inch deep bowl or platter or whatever it is we're going to do on the top. I still think I'm going to take this, this sharp corner away, sweep it up a little bit more. Well, that looks better, doesn't it? It's not there anymore, but it, it looks way better. Don't you think? Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. Well, this is, this is, this is totally fun. Let's see if I can clean up my cuts a little bit with a shear scrape. Way better. Nice. Okay, I'm I'm getting I'm getting to dig this. So glue block or recess? Don't say glue block. I hate putting on a glue block. It just it just takes time. At first I gotta make one, then I gotta glue it on, then I gotta wait. Who wants to do all that? Let's just put in a recess. Come on, come on. For me. Okay? Okay, good job. See that? It looks to be about the right diameter. I'm going to use my recess tool to put a dovetail on the outside edge of that. Got to get up a little bit higher for that. By golly gum, I think we did it. I think it's time for sanding. I'm gonna start the sanding with my Sandoflex. I'm gonna sand all of the bark, well not all of the bark, all of the bark around here that I likely won't remove, but just around this edge, maybe an inch, inch and a half, something like that. With uh, 120 grit, and then I'll do 180 grit, and then I'll stop there on the bark. When I'm done with that, I'll do my two inch disc starting at 80 grit and working up through 400 on all of the turn parts and I'll show you what that looks like as soon as I get my mask on. And I'll do more of that, that's just a sample of what it looks like. And then with the lathe spinning in reverse at about 375,
Easy peasy. I'll bring it back here in a bit and we'll put some probably sanding sealer on there. See you in a bit. Well, cutting this poorly on the bandsaw as I did might be one of the best mistakes I ever made. So I think this looks, I think this looks pretty dang cool. Now this is kind of a, a softer wood and a little porous. So I don't know if we're going to get a high shine on here. I don't think so, but it'll be, it'll be a nice finish. So what I'm going to do is put two coats of this sanding sealer on here. This is shellac based sanding sealer. It's called Zinzer Seal Coat. And then I'll put two coats of shellac on over that. And then I'll bring you back and we will start working on the inside. And that's where I cannot make a mistake on that one. We only have maybe an inch to deal with. So it's, it's going to be shallow, but, but the design as it is will look good shallow. And that's what I like about it, I guess. I just think it's pretty, pretty cool. I hope you like it as much as I do. I'll see you back here in just a bit. I have the piece turned around with the chuck jaws expanded into the recess. We're going to be turning at 630 RPM, 5 8 inch bowl gouge, say it with me, mask and face shield on. need to establish this outside edge thickness so I'm going to be stopping often so that I don't get out here too far. I like to leave, leave a, a good quantity of bark when it's nice like this. So that might be about as far as we go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work with that for a bit. I can always come back and take a little more if I need to. Now you can see this is much thicker. That's because we haven't gotten down to that part yet. But we're about to. I wanted to get to the bottom of this hole because that gives me a good guide. Now I know I can go another quarter of an inch, but not any more than that. Now we have just about an equal thickness around here. So we're looking good going out this way, unless you think I should take off more bark, make it thinner. Speak up or forever, you know. Yeah, okay, a little tiny bit more, not much. This will be the first of many checks, unless we're already there, I'm not sure. Oh boy! <laughs> it's about 3 sixteenths, so that's about as deep as we can go. I'm pretty happy with the edge. I can go a little thinner right here, because that's where the base that it sits on is right there. Pretty thin over here. Yeah, that's also about 3 sixteenths. So about my only working room is right here taking it down a little bit further and then we'll scrape it and that'll that'll be as best we can do. I'm going to try my scraper. It often doesn't work so good on uh, softwoods, but I can't get a good angle with the gouge. I will try it.
to see what that looks like. Oh, looks pretty good. Okay. So yeah, we're done. Time for sanding. I'm going to be doing all the sanding with my 2 inch disc starting at 80 grit and working up through 400. I'll start with the lathe spinning forward at about 380 and then I'll reverse it and still at 380. Sand it both directions and I'll alternate forward reverse, forward reverse all the way through 400 grit. And I'll show you what that looks like as soon as I get my mask on. So that's spinning forward with my drill spinning forward. Now I'm going to reverse it with my drill spinning in reverse. And that's going to be pretty easy. So I'll bring you back here in a bit and we'll put some sanding sealer on there. See you in a bit. Well that sanding was so easy it was almost fun. Almost. That's some pretty, pretty green, huh? Pretty color. And I just love the contrast with the bark. Huh? That was easy too. I'll put two more, or one more coat of sanding sealer on. Two coats of shellac. As the same as I did on the outside. And I'll bring it back in a bit and we'll take a look at it. Be sure you stick around at the end of the video so you can see the before and after shots of this piece. If you'd share the video, I would really appreciate that. Thank you so much. It really helps out my channel, helps it grow a little bit. I don't know how important that is to anybody but me, but it's important to me. So if you do that, that'd be cool. Here it is, one Kentucky coffee tree. I'm not gonna call it a platter, cause it's not flat. I'm not gonna call it a bowl, cause it's not deep. I'm not gonna call it a dish, but I probably could. I'm just gonna call it an art piece. Mother Nature's art, hard at work here, and, and there she is, looking good, looking good. Now I mentioned that this is an open grain wood, so you can actually feel the grain. I've got two coats of sanding sealer on here and two coats of shellac. I could have kept applying it until you couldn't feel the grain anymore, but why would I do that? It's kind of a semi-shiny finish, right? That looks good. Reflects the light a little bit and it's sealed up uh, you could pour water on there and it's not going to soak in with that shellac finish don't pour alcohol on it that'd be a waste of good alcohol and it would dissolve the finish but you could pour water on there and it's not going to get hurt so the the wood is protected it feels great you can feel the grain like i said and it looks great, so why, why take it any further? And there's the back. Now I haven't signed it. There's a reason I haven't signed it. I will sign it, uh, but I'm gonna save that for another time. I've, I, like I said, I've, I've, I've got a reason for it. And you will become aware of that reason in the very near future. But it's just, it's just a beautiful piece of wood and, and beautiful bark, don't you think? Kentucky coffee tree, how cool is that? Thank you, Trisha Humphrey, for sending this along for all to enjoy. Don't I wish I hadn't said that yet. I got one more thing to show you. <laughs> Hang in there, Trisha. So, so I used the recess, and it has the dovetail on the inside of that recess. What does the dovetail mean? Well, dovetail means it's uh, wider inside there than it is outside here. It's, it's wider. See this wood screw? This is, it looks like, I don't know, number 10 wood screw. I just thought of this, and maybe other people have thought of it before, I never have. You can take this, drive this wood screw into the wall, and because of that bevel, you can just hang this right up. It's gonna be stable, it's not gonna fall off. You can hang it this way if you like, on the wall. That looks good, right? Just take it down when you need it. Hang it whichever way you want. So just a quick little tip there that I'm sure there's lots of platters and uh, shallow bowls. I wouldn't hang a great big bowl on, on a screw like that. But thinner stuff like this, I'm sure there's tons of pieces that maybe people haven't thought about hanging on the wall for storage, for appearance, for art's sake. Go for that. Just a fun little tip. Thank you, Trisha Humphrey, for sending this along for all to enjoy.
If you like this video, thumbs up please, I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly. I truly appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber and would like to become one, I put out regular videos about one a week and I'd like to keep in touch. An easy way to subscribe is just click my picture you see there near the end of the video. Your comments are always welcome and I love reading them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.